Hi there. So, as you start to get into Oracle Mobile Cloud Servers, you're going to start to discover that MCS uses some very well-known and well-loved technologies to develop and to implement your application functionality. In this episode, you're going to get a very quick technology primer in Node.js, which is the scripting engine Oracle MCS uses for developing custom APIs. My name is Grant Ronalds from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. So when it comes to building custom APIs using Oracle MCS, one of the key tasks for the services developer is to take new or existing enterprise systems and map and shape those services to the mobile APIs that the mobile developer might have specified. To do this, MCS allows the service developer to write JavaScript code using Node.js to implement the shaping and the routing of requests. So for example, an incoming GET request to a particular MCS resource might require inspecting the header and routing that request to a different backend resource depending on information in the header. Or a single request might initiate a number of different calls to various backends and it's Node.js that's giving you that power and the flexibility. Okay, so let's understand exactly what is Node.js and, and what does it look like? Well, when we talk about coding in Node.js, what we're really talking about is JavaScript. Now, you probably come across JavaScript in your day-to-day -day life. It's a scripting language that you usually associate with browsers and would typically be used to spice up the functionality that you have on HTML pages. Node.js is basically the same JavaScript language running in the same Chrome V8 JavaScript engine that you get in the Chrome browser, but instead it's running on your server or in our case MCS. So you have one set of skills for browser and server-side development. So JavaScript in your browser might be used to execute functionality of a button's pressed in the browser compared to Node.js where you write code to be executed, for example, if an HTTP call is made to the server. So here's the world's simplest Node.js JavaScript example. Declare a variable and print its value out to the console. Now, of course, you'll be doing much more exciting things with Node.js. And the real power of Node.js for server-side development is that there are a whole bunch of modules for doing lots of common things like handling HTTP or SSL. Or you can use something called the Node Package Manager to import any of the thousands of third-party Node libraries that are out there as well. Okay, so let's have a very quick look under the covers of Node.js to understand it just a little bit better. Node.js is architected around two concepts, single-threaded and non blocking. With a single threaded architecture, there's only one Node.js execution thread. So each client has to wait until the thread has the capacity to deal with that request, and when it does, it's executed. So there's no costly context switching as one request comes in and the state gets offloaded to deal with it. This makes Node.js very fast and ideally suited for the very high throughput required in, in, our, in MCS. But what if one of these requests takes ages to complete, for example, to get information back from a file, a network, or a database? Doesn't that block the thread? Well, no, because Node.js uses asynchronous or non-blocking I.O. That means that I.O. calls, which are proportionally very slow, are fired off, and then execution continues. It's only when the I.O. call completes that something called a callback is then executed. So in executing a long-running call, the callback is an additional function that you supply to handle when the I.O. returns. So it's like saying, I'm just going to do some work now, tell me your phone number and I'll give you a call when I'm finished. So here you can see the gears within Node.js executing something called an event loop, waiting for code to execute. Now code A needs to execute, which it does, to completion and then finishes. Next code B needs to execute. However, code B requires a call to a relatively slow resource like a network or a database. In this case, the blocking call is kicked off and a callback is placed in an event queue whilst to execute. Code B then continues on. Then code C needs to execute. It also has some blocking code which results in a callback being placed on the event queue whilst code C executes. Only once the event loop is free and the blocking calls are complete, Will the callback code then execute? 
So it's this asynchronous nature of Node.js that makes the language very interesting. So let's have a look at how this translates into a real but simple code example. Now here's a very simple Node.js program which uses the callback that we mentioned earlier. You can see here I'm declaring a function called do something that will print a message to the console. And here's the rest of the program that's going to execute. First, it puts out a message that's about to start. Very simple. Then it calls a function called setTimeout, which has two parameters. The second parameter indicates the timeout should wait for five seconds. The first parameter defines what function or callback to call when the timeout is complete. And finally, the last line prints out to the console. Now, when we execute this code, the console shows the program is starting. Then you can see that the last line of the code has been executed. However, it's five seconds later before we see the message, hello, I'm back. Now, this shows that the timeout didn't block the rest of the execution of the code. When the timeout finished, the callback was called, and then that then printed out the message. Now, when it comes to writing custom APIs in MCS, you'll, of course, be doing something much more exciting than just Hello World. And whilst you learn more about that in later videos, here's just a very quick and simple example of what a very simple custom API in Node.js looks like. And this is utilizing a Node module called Express, which is particularly suited for building HTTP solutions calling GET, POST, etc. Now, in this example, we're registering a router or a listener which will respond to a GET request coming from the Hello World URL. In fact, we're registering a callback, meaning that other code can execute while you're waiting for a GET request. Makes sense. You'll then notice that callback has two parameters, one for a request and one for a response. So if you look at the code, we're going to first of all log a console message. Then we create a new item called item1, which contains some data. Again, very simple. And then we take the response object and call it send function with a 200 code, meaning it's successful, and we add the item 1 to the response. Hey presto, a very simple custom API that responds to a GET request with some data and a 200 HTTP code. So with this little primer, you've now got a taste for Node.js, and from here, I really encourage you to watch further episodes where you'll quickly become skilled and using Node.js to build MCS solutions. Thank you very much for watching.